Hey everyone, Eliova here, and we're back with some more FGL. We're going to continue now with LB2, and we just met Gerda, who's probably, who probably has one of the cutest character designs in the whole game. And I guess we're going to her village now. No battles. Ooh! There's sheep and everything. Shutting down high speed mode, now. Good work hanging on, everyone. Our current estimated location is atop what used to be Lake Vanner. Vanner? The lake northwest of Lake Vetern. Which means this village almost certainly didn't exist in proper human history. We're here! Welcome to my village! Oh, I just noticed... This is a nice team. It has those... Bagpipe? It reminds me of bagpipes. Fofo! <laughs> this is so strange and wonderful! I thought guests only showed up in stories. That's sad. I never thought I'd actually I'd get to actually welcome guests, real guests myself one day. And uh, and 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 you must both be envoys too. Have you never had anyone visit from outside your village before? No, we haven't. All the villages really keep to themselves. Oh but Maybe it's different at other villages? I see. What's this village called? Come to think of it, you never did tell us your name, your village's name, did you, Gerda? The part that stands out the most is the large gate that makes up what looks to be the only entrance. I don't know much about architectural design, but this place does seem to have its own unique style. I also sense powerful magical energy here. The whole village is surrounded by a bounded field centered on that large, large gate. It's designed to keep away giants, beasts, and other beings related to magecraft. I can feel it draining down on me too, though only a little. Although, I didn't notice it at all until I was inside. I'm guessing it's the snow. The magical energy mixed in with the snow and ice, and the magical energy that makes up this village's bounded field, are extremely similar. It's a very static, sedate kind of energy, as if its presence were the most natural thing in the world. It's calm, gentle, and very stable in the amount of magical energy it holds. Maybe kind is a little too vague? But I'm not quite sure how else to put it. Magecraft to enrich people's lives? Yes, that's a much clearer way to put it, Senpai. All that aside, this village is really spacious. Maybe that's because there are so few houses and a large plot of farmland in the center? I can see they grow all sorts of crops here. There's wheat, numerous fruit trees. It's just like Gerda said, it's as warm here as it was in that flower garden. This explains how people could survive even in a lost belt predominantly made of uh, snow, ice and fire. Although, there's still one thing I don't understand. If bounded fields are so crucial to ensuring people's way of life here, who put them up? For fall, fall. Maybe Magecraft is just a part of everyday life here, even more than it was in Russia. Or maybe there's someone in these villages who knows how to work with bounded fields. Mm hmm Bounded field? Are you talking about the charm on the gate? 
I didn't really understand most of what you were talking about, but um, I do know that every village gate always has a charm on it. The envoy put them there for us. They keep out all the giants, the ice beasts, really anything scary. I'm surprised you two didn't know that, since you're envoys. Is that just the way it works, Lady Mash? Uh, uh, well... I think you may have the wrong idea about us. I don't believe we are what you call envoys. Although, if envoys is the term used for visitors, then I suppose we might qualify. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, I got through. Let me see, is this thing on? <coughs> This is the shadow border. Can you hear me, field ops? Ah! Fofo! Director? Director, it's you! We thought I couldn't communicate once we got a few kilometers away. Yes, well, my technical advisor has been testing out a number of different things in between her work on repairing the border. All under my impeccable supervision, of course. And thanks to those efforts, we've been able to deploy a Mystic Code drone to extend our comm range. I was told it should help us both observe and communicate over greater distances, but I didn't think it's just certainly start working now, of all times. Maybe it's because of the magical energy in the village? Ah, uh, but just my luck! Neither our technical advisor nor any staff are here in the cockpit right now. They're all out, repairing the border. Uh-uh? Who's this tiny seat-your tubby man? <laughs> um... Um... I... whatever. He's fat. I've never seen a fat person before. So this is what you, they call Chubby. Chubby? Is he a friend of yours, Lady Mash? Does that mean he's an envoy too? Fofo? Tubby? Did you call me Tubby? Uh, well, um, this is a communicator. It's a tool we have for talking to people far away. Also, um, the director may be big boned, but. Is that child a native of this place? Then you must have found a safe village! Then again, if that full mouthed little brat who doesn't understand and mocking people's body types is not acceptable, is anything to go by, then her culture must still be at the nadir of civilization. Ah, uh, she didn't understand anything you just said. Well, no matter. Children do tend to be naturally cruel, and my skin is quite thick by this point. I'm not the least bit bothered. Of course you're not. So never mind the child. Just give me a detailed report about your situation. Yada yada yada, yada yada yada. So you made your way to this village after rescuing that child? It seems you put your experience in Russia to good use. Or, I suppose I should say, my supervisory role in Russia has benefited you even after that lost belt. Not bad, making it this far, this far, this fast. Let me begin by congratulating you on your good work. I'll be sure to share your information with the rest of the staff, including the technical advisor. Now, given that our connection is still unstable, and we can talk for long, it seems it's time I took matter into my own hands. Huh? Wait, Nani? What do you think I am? Some adventure craze not like the rest of you? I'm talking about the remote inter interrogation of a local thing this transmission. But not this child, obviously. We won't get anything useful out of her. Now then, little one. Me? 
run along, run along and get your parents if you don't mind. I need to talk to them. What? Is this like... Maybe they don't age? No, but she mentioned adults. Parents? What are those? Huh? Your mother father, of course. If they're dead, your legal guardian will do. Oh, you mean the goddess? I hear she's everyone's mother. Every human is the goddess's child, after all. But... I'm afraid the goddess isn't here, Mr. Chubby. Fall. Gerda? Hmm? Don't tell me you have no concept of parents. I've never heard of such a culture. I suppose it is possible for some newer religions, but given your primitive looking clothing, I can't imagine your village is part of something like that. What is going on? Uh, alright then. Just fetch me your village elder, or mayor, or your uh, supervisor. I don't know. Supervisor? Yes, a capable, a capable, distinguished person who is in charge of everything, like me. <laughs> oh boy. Distinguished? Does being a chubby person make you distinguished? That has nothing to do with it! Good heavens, girl. Didn't your parents raise you to... Oh, right. You don't have parents, do you? Well, you know, somebody with, with authority in your village. Well? The most amazing person in your village. The one you can always count on to help you out. <laughs> oh... What's with this conversation? <laughs> Are you talking about envoys? Lady Mash is certainly more amazing than normal people. The only other amazing people I can think of are the giants and the envoy. But the envoy isn't coming until tomorrow. Envoy? Gerda calls me an envoy too. I'm afraid I'm still not sure what she means by it. What I mean? A navel is a navel, right? An archer is an archer. I mean, no human could ever defeat a giant. <clears throat> but never mind that. I still need to show you around properly, don't I? Welcome, honored envoys. Oh, and you too, Mr. Tiny Secret Chubby. Welcome to our home, Village 23. Please. Let me repay you for saving my life. And the, the villagers are numbered. Eey. You can spend the night in my house. I'll be 13 soon, after all. So I have already got my own house. Um. <laughs> we can have dinner in front of my fireplace. Oh, I can get out that ma- That... This warrior I'm struggling with is made? I can- oh, I can get out that meat I've been saving for a special occasion, too. This will be great! We can have freshly baked bread, and I'll get some fish, too. I'll go fishing before it gets dark, and make sure to catch the biggest one in the pond. Oh, she's so sweet. Though I don't like how this village is going on. I don't, I don't like the... I don't like the village. Fofo! Fofo! Wait, hang on. What did you say your village's name was? Village 23, right? Hmm? Yes, that's right. What about it? Well, um, it just sounds a bit... Why is your village name into a number? Nani? There's nothing strange about it, after all. Ah, It's Gerda! Gerda's back! Welcome back, Gerda! I can't believe it! You really came back from the outside! And did you get the herbs the legends talked about? 
Now Laura's going to be alright. Hooray! Who are they? Oh, there's a white animal too. It is an animal, right? What is it? Is it a mouse? Wow, you're so pretty, miss. And your black armor is so awesome. Pretty hair, pretty face. You look like the envoy. Oh, are you an envoy too? <coughs> um. Um. <laughs> your boobies are so big. Oh, you look so cool in that armor. I, I, um, senpai, what's going on? That old guy is so dubby. Why are you smaller than us even though you look so old, mister? Gah, be quiet. Do children ever stop squawking? Just run off and play, would you? Oh, better yet, go and fetch a grown-up. Kids. Kids everywhere. <laughs> I don't actually see any grown-ups. That's true. I haven't seen a single adult yet. Since this village appears to, be, to rely on agriculture for its survival, it may be that everyone of working age is, is just out in the fields. But if that's the case, then why aren't any elderly people around? What? Is that true? Well, of course it's mostly children here. That's how it is everywhere, right? Besides, <laughs> you're so funny, Lady Mesh. Everyone knows the Elder are just from Legends. Um, what? Of course you're not going to find any in a village. I mean... Hmm? What? Every girl up leaves when they turn 25, right? Mm, as in lives the village? Of course. Huh? What in the world are you saying? They couldn't possibly survive out there without what with all the giants roaming about. Yes, I know. Every grown-up with a 10-year-old child leaves once they turn 25. What? Leaves once they turn 25 and gets eaten by a giant? Um... Is this like what? Some attack on Titan? Uh, Promised Neverland? Village? Eee. So nobody ever leaves past 25. And if you haven't had a child by. What? Ugh. Ew. Ugh. And, you ha and if you haven't had a child by 15, then you have to go too. I've heard that's true for every village. At least, all the villages from 1 to 100. Exactly. Uh, what? Th then... You're telling us there are no adults over the age of 25 here? None? And that people who turn 15 without having children have to live to die? Uh-huh. Children and the grown-ups raising them are the only ones allowed to live in the hundred villages the goddess and her envoys made for us, after all. Ugh. I am speechless. And she doesn't even realize how messed up that the things are. Eh. Hey. Uh, 
um, Lady Mash, Lady Ritsuna, Mr. Chubby. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Why are you all so shocked? That's just how it is. It's the same everywhere, right? I'm turning 15 in two years. Uh, don't say that. Uh. I, wait, let me just a second. I, I have to take a screenshot of this and traumatize my fate friend. Okay, this is extremely cursed. <sighs> I'm turning 15 in two years, so if I don't have any children by then, splat! <sighs> That'll be it for me. Yep. This is absurd. Everything you're saying is ridiculous. Well, the way your mind works is, too. Do you even grasp what you're saying? You're telling us there are only a hundred people in each village? Wait, so there's like what? 10,000? Yeah, there's like only 10,000 people in this last belt. Eesh. That you have to die if you don't have a children before you turn 15? That you'll die in two years? Are you some kind of homunculus? How can you say things like that as if you were normal? You even look happy about it! Uh. Huh? You too, Fo? What happened? Why do you so so, so why do you so so uh, why do you sound so sad all of a sudden? Oh no, did I say something to offend you again? Uh oh, now what do I do? Mm. Oh god. This is... Now we're back to the... Now we're back to the Elsa Scotty Palace. Oh, and it's her again. Ah, this is too much for me. What an elegant castle you have here. I like it very much. It's wonderfully designed, of course, but I also love your choice of materials. It's made completely out of ice, after all. No human could ever live here, no matter how beautiful it is. The perfect witch's castle, something humankind yearns for but can never hope to reach. You really do have excellent taste, your majesty. Who said this was made to my tastes? Oh my, you mean it isn't? Does that mean you'd prefer something more typical, like Cinderella's castle? <laughs> That's kind of funny. Cinderella? I've never heard her name, but she certainly sounds interesting. She must have lived a life full of hope and surprise. One far removed from the life of a woman of ice and snow like myself. Ah uh, yes, yeah, Cinder. Oh yes, without a doubt. The early part with her st Oh! Early, <laughs> I was thinking of Earl's. The early part with her stepsisters abusing her is great. Ew. But then she comes out on top at the end, and steps and stepsisters get their just desserts. It's a positively repulsive story. I'm just so so relieved that you are anything like that, Your Majesty. After all, you hate happy endings, don't you? Just look at this cold, utilitarian world you've designed. It makes me want to befriend. Really? It makes me want to friend you on Magebook. 
I'd love to know just how many human lives you've seen come to, an, to a miserable end. After all, you didn't build this castle for humanity to enjoy, did you, who goddess? No, I did not. This castle exists for me, not for the benefit of humans. I will admit that Odin was a fine man in his own right, but he was also a god. He would never bestow upon me a castle designed to accommodate humans. The All Father would never concern himself with human weakness. The thought would never even cross his mind. Indeed, humans are weak, frail, so fragile. Their lives are snuffed out by the mere passage of time. That is why they will always need the boundless love of a god to sustain them. Oh my, love, you say? I guess I had figured you wrong after all. So that's how you're running this place. You have a hundred villages with about a hundred residents in each, making for a world population of no more than 10,000 people. Under most circumstances, they would just end up going extinct, but you've kept them around for generations without letting their numbers increase. Their world revolves around the empty happiness of their daily lives and the heartless suffering that comes right at the end. There's no point in tormenting people like that. No wonder I've been so unmotivated here. Eh, you'd probably found a way. It turns out this place was filled with love all along. Couldn't possibly get farther from my tastes. Of course. Humans must not die out. They too are my beloved children. They too survive the days of scorching flame. As their gods, I will never stop loving humans. I cannot speak to other worlds, but that is the way of this one. I decided long ago that I will love my children for eternity. Why would I ever destroy them? Then you really have no intention of destroying humans? Does that mean your majesty thinks they're worth protecting? You certainly ask many strange questions, fox woman. I would never think to destroy them. Every creature in my domain is treated the same way. Did I not tell you what that was? It is a simple question. Do I kill them or love them? That's kind of extreme. If they are an enemy, then I kill them. If not, I love them. To be the mother of Scandinavia is to love all creatures, great and small. None must die out. None shall die by my hand. Even if Odin himself proved to be incapable of such a feat, I will never stop trying, no matter how many thousands of years it may take. That said, yes, that said, at times, the giants must be offered a sacrifice. Eh, that face. Oh, hello, Fion. Goldilocks. Ophelia, your concerns prove to be well founded. The Russian Lost Belt has been destroyed. It won't be much longer before it disappears entirely. Ah, so it didn't disappear yet? Now that world will never be capable of welcoming a new god. What a pity. All the more so given the string of its history. In regards to Kadok, I said all I had to say during our meeting, so I won't be repeating myself here. But I do need to commend you for your outstanding accuracy in predicting this outcome. I... I didn't. You give me far too much credit, Lord Kishtaria. Ophelia, I want you to run your lost belt however you see fit. Once the Tree of Emptiness has taken root in a world, it's not that that world's king who will continue to develop it, but we, cryptors. In the end, that responsibility falls to us alone. We cannot delegate it to anyone else. 
The queen of ice and snow is both generous and cruel. I understand dealing with her must be quite stressful. But I want you to persevere to persevere. I know you are more capable you are more than capable of doing so. You have your own fire burning inside you, yet you keep yourself as cold as ice. That's why I know I can trust you with Scandinavia. I, I, with all the respect, Lord Kishtaria, I can't take any credit for predicting this. I was speaking solely based on my own feelings. I'm so ashamed. Here you are praising me for keeping my cool, and I failed utterly to do so. It's all right. What you said was exactly what Kadok needed to hear. No amount of cold-headed logic was ever going to happen with his complex about me. Your admonition was far more effective than any encouragement I could have given him, even if it didn't come too late. At any rate, none of the other cryptors know that Russia has fallen. I only heard about it from Canis, and you from Koyanskaya. Akta has cut off all communications. It seems her lost belt skiing is quite a find. After all, even Akta of all people couldn't help but frown when she made her report. I even heard her sigh. I can only imagine her lost belt skiing must be either extremely unruly or, extre or extremely daring. I would love to speak with them myself at some point. Hinako sighing? That is a surprise. I never once saw her so much as crack a smile, even around Peperoncino. That aside, shouldn't we tell other cryptos about Kadok? No need for that. His failure has no impact on their work, after all. Given that Peperoncino's lost belt has an alter ego, it's only a matter of time until he hears about it. Nani? them and it's always it's always England the British Isles it makes me wonder what Nassau thinks of Britain <laughs> extremely OP people but also extremely messy I guess but Beryl's lost belt is nearly on the verge of disappearing itself so I imagine he has his hands full just keeping things going Nani? He does look kinda creepy, especially in the opening. Are you sure we can trust Beryl? The man is a criminal, a murderer. He kills just for the fun of it. He's a disgrace to humanity. Why would you hire a murderer? Why would you do that? Marius Burrow, you're, you're an idiot. I don't see how a creep. Eh. I don't see how a killer known as Werewolf and the spies throughout the clock tower could ever hope to successfully expand the Lost Belt. And before he's actually the most successful one out of all of them. The Lost Belt is disappearing but he's going to find some BS way of keeping it alive and it will actually be the best place to live in. All that is part of why I trust him to uphold his ends, Ophelia. Beryl is just as good at deceiving himself as he is others. Really? The more distasteful he finds a job, the more earnestly he will work to see it done. So he can clean his hands of it, I guess? As for Kadok, there's no need for you to concern yourself with his well-being. Just focus on getting rid of Kaldia. I have every confidence you can do it. You're far more than me when it comes to combat, as your mirac miraculous eye can even wound servants. Damn. The Clock Tower Authority figures are gone. They have no sway in this world. No one will hold you back anymore. You are free to use your power however you like. Your eye is no longer that of a shunned child. Thank you for saying so, Lord Kishtaria. I will bear I will bear that in mind. 
Your Scandinavian lost belt is a rare and important one, particularly given that one of the old gods still resides there. What's more, she is benevolent. Having her accept and support a new world will be an a tremendous asset. I have high hopes that you will be able to convince her of Ophelia. Thank you, Lord Kishtaria. I won't let you down. All right. Canis. After her. Eh. Uh, her. Him. It's complicated. I'll just go with her because that's the, the appearance of the current body. And so she's been summoned as Canis instead of Canis. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Canis should be paying you a visit soon. Treat him as you like. Thank you for your consideration, Lord Kishtaria. But I'm afraid I have to tell you something. Canis is a divine spirit and beyond my ability to keep in check. I hope you'll forgive me if I'm unable to stop her from clashing with my Lost Bells King. So you're concerned that the Queen and your knight may end up destroying Canis' spirit origin? I see. That's most encouraging to hear, Ophelia. This only reaffirms my decision to entrust you with this Lost Belt. I look forward to your next report. I expect that will be when new seeds have formed. Crypt her out. Ophelia said. Wodaim. Lord Kishtaria Wodaim. Hello. <laughs> he is a pretty boy, I guess. I actually had, I remember when I first saw the, I mean, I first watched the opening for LB2 for, for the Lost Belts. I watched it before I actually finished the part one story, so I didn't know anything about what was going on. And, I, and at first I did think that Wodime was a woman. That's a woman's face. I've seen faces like that before. <laughs> I may not know any personally, but I can't help but remember them. So, oh, he's he's talking about Ophelia, not not, not Kristaria. Well, that was an awkward misunderstanding. <laughs> oh boy. So, you really are a woman at heart, Ophelia. Hey. That's dangerous. You're not meant to use your spirit or form for peeping. Your job is only to keep me safe. Don't misunderstand me. You are my knight, my sword and shield. I never asked or wanted anything more from you, and that's never going to change. Know your place, Saber. Damn. Or do I need to remind you about my serious light? I know I'm supposed to protect you and kill your enemies, Ophelia, but is that necessary here? Yes, humans have demonstrated incredible power before. At times, they've rebelled against gods, tricked giants, and, evil, and even killed dragons. Like you did? But not here. The humans here aren't people anymore. They're livestock. None of them are a threat to you. These humans used to be just like the ones in proper human history. Weak, transient beings whose only purpose was to be our prey. This world belongs to a goddess. Even if there are less than 10,000 humans here, it is still a pure land ruled by a goddess of old. Lord Kishtaria even said it could end up the last lost belt left standing. The fact that a goddess rules it also means that it's the perfect place to experiment. That's why this Lost Belt has so much potential. In fact, it is far more than the sums of, it, of its parts. Oh? 
in terms of potential at any rate. If we can grow our tree to maturity, we might be able to breathe new life into humanity and nature alike. I don't care how much contempt you have for humanity as a result of your origins and temperament. All I care about is that you don't let your guard down. Again, you're my shield and my sword. Don't forget that. You and I share the same responsibility. We must go this lost belt's tree of emptiness of to, feel ma to full maturity. That is your sole concern. Hmm. I've never been much of a gardener, but if you insist, Ophelia, I've guess, I guess I guess no, I uh, I guess I've got no choice. Yes, Ophelia is like what someone who has a bunch of what a bunch of uh, someone who has a bunch of responsibilities and has to keep everyone together. <laughs> Eh, that's kind of creepy actually. You don't actually see him, but you can feel that he's still there. Eh. I can still feel his gaze. I guess my knight will always be peeping on me, no matter how many times I tell him not to. I can tell you're still there smirking at me from behind my back. Just how long are you planning on watching me? I know I said you're my knight, but that doesn't mean... Hello? Wait, what, maybe it was her instead? And not him? Oh. You again, huh? The way you completely lack any presence, I mistook you for a servant. Yeah, so I guess it was her. Is there something you want to say to me? I certainly hope you're not going to comment on my womanhood, like Saber did. I can't hear anything. What's your name? Am I ever going to am, am I ever going to get to hear what you sound like? I'm well, you already know my name. Eh, poor Ophelia. <laughs> Koyanskaya is that. Sigurd is uh, that. And the queen, she's okay ish. But okay, that will be it for now. And I'll be back soon with more FGO. So until then, see you next time.